Welcome to this tutorial showing you how to create a piece of artwork in response to the artist Stefan Sagmeister. And you'll see in Photopia, I have already opened up a photograph of myself. And the first thing I'm going to do is use the crop tool just to crop it down. So I'm going to drag over the bit that I want and then move it to make it perfect and then press the tick at the top and that's cropped it down for me. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is image adjustments, hue saturation, just to saturate the image a little bit more, make myself a bit more colourful, which helps with the overall effect at the end. Okay, maybe a little bit darker, tiny bit. Click OK. Right, now we are ready to start making our holes. Um, so I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. Um, I tend to start around the eyes because that's uh, a kind of good place to start. Um, and I'm going to grab the free pen tool and make sure that the fill and the stroke are both black and that the tolerance is right up there, 7980, something like that. And then I'm literally going to start drawing my holes. And because the tolerance is so high, you'll see the line shake a bit. Um, but just Try to ignore that as you draw it and draw the shape that you want. And it is literally about filling everything in your face except for the features and your hair, uh, so basically all your skin, with these kind of holes. Um, I would try and think about the uh, form of your face, so how you can use the holes to help you show the the round of your nose and you know the the shape of your cheeks and things like that um but it really is just a case of putting these holes in wherever you want it's not a perfect science it may be a case that some of the shapes you don't like in which case just delete them and draw a new one try to keep your shapes that are kind of um, consistent size, um, but obviously sometimes areas are smaller and you have to do smaller shapes. Um, but it seems to me that in uh, the artist's work the holes are quite consistent in terms of size. So try not to fill huge areas with a big hole, otherwise it will kind of ruin the effect. So you'll see underneath my eye here I'm dividing it into three different sections rather than um, just one big section. And once you've done those, then it's a case of trying to get that area between your eye and your eyebrow. Because you don't want to cover your eyebrow. That's one of the features you want to keep in. And then I'll come down and just do around the top of my nose. And I think rather than bore you with any more of the same, because you're literally going to do this across the whole of your face, you don't need to watch me do the same. I am going to cut away and I will come back with my piece completely done. And I think it's uh, just as well you didn't stay and watch. I did 108 holes in the end. So what I'm doing is I'm selecting all of those layers. And I'm going to right click and merge those layers together. So they're all on one layer. I'm then going to grab the magic wand tool. And I'm going to select everywhere but those holes. In other words, you know, the whole of the background. Then I'm going to select inverse, and that's going to make all of the holes selected. I'm then going to make that layer invisible, go back to my photo layer and press delete. And there you go. You can see now I've taken all of those areas and made them into holes. Okay, right. I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to drag that underneath my photo and I'm going to use the paint bucket and white just to 
fill the background in. You don't have to do this. I'm doing this for the tutorial so you can see what happens when I do the next step, which is to double click on my photo layer and go to drop shadow. And you'll see a shadow forms making the holes look like they're three dimensional, like they're above the layer below. Okay, and it's a case of, as per usual with the drop shadow, playing with the distance and playing with the size and the opacity um, and even the angle if you need to, depending on what you want the angle to be, until you're happy with the shadow you've got. Okay, and you click OK. And it's now that we can start adding things below. So first thing you could do, is um, use the gradient tool. So I'm gonna make sure I've got black and white as my two colors. Uh, go to the gradient tool, make sure I've got radial selected. And from my nose outwards, I'm gonna drag and it will turn my face into a kind of shaded look, a bit like the art, one of the pieces of the artist's work. Um, another thing you could do is grab a picture to put behind. So I found this picture on Google. I'm just using the rectangular select and then control C then going back to this image, control V to paste it in. And there it is. I'll just bring it up to the top so I can work with it. Grab the arrow tool to rotate it and resize it. And I want to obviously make sure it covers the, uh, all the holes. There we go. And then when you're happy, just drag it down underneath your photo layer. And there it is. Okay. So it doesn't have to be a picture of things. It could be uh, concentric circles like the artist has done. So I'm just going to grab that picture too. Control C to copy it. Control V to paste it in once I selected it. Dragging this up to the top. And I'm going to make the middle come from my eye, I think. Um, so probably the best thing to do to be able to see that is to just turn the opacity down on this for the time being so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, make it big enough to cover the whole of the holes. There we go. Okay, then I can drag it down underneath my photo and bring the opacity back up. And there you go, that's another way of responding. And then I'll show you one more, which is this image, which again I found on Google. Rectangular select the whole thing, control C to copy it, control V to paste it into the image, drag it to the top so we can work with it. Get the right tool, there it is, the arrow tool, to move it, make it big enough to cover the holes. centralize it and then drag it down beneath the photo and I'm just gonna shimmy it about I think make it a bit there we go okay so that's once you've done the holes several different ways of adding things into the background and you could do as many as you like and that is this piece done and dusted I hope you find this tutorial helpful